Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So as we all know, 50 Cent is well known for, you know, being basically a troll online and willing to engage in all types of public feuds. So if you guys do not know, 50 Cent his Instagram account on Monday to raise questions about P. Diddy's potential involvement in the unsolved mystery of Tupac Shakur's death. So basically, 50 Cent took to Twitter and Instagram and he wrote, damn, so pot got lined up by Brother Love, LOL, time to lawyer up, shit might get sticky. And then he also showed that infamous picture of Tupac in the car next to Suge Knight in that black BMW. So now what's also very interesting is that last night he was on stage and he was throwing even more shots at Diddy. I want y'all to go ahead and watch what 50 Cent had to say last night. Check this out. That's why I don't be going to them puffy parties. Uh uh. They can hug you from the front and the back at the same time. What the fuck you talking about? Uh, I mean, look, if you are into that, you into that, I'm fine with it. To get you some. I'm just saying this shit, my motherfucker got a party. I like it. It's uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girls' bathroom. And shit like that is going on. I hate when they leave me to talk because I always say the wrong thing. I was like, last time they left me, I said something about puffing. So that, so that thing came on. Yeah. I gotta stop doing that kind of shit. I gotta, I've, been, I've been talking to a uh, therapist to try to help me with the shit I've been saying. I said, crazy shit. I'm like, no, no reason. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe I said that shit about Puffy because he got Tupac here. Maybe I said that shit about Puffy because he got Tupac here. I thought it was for no reason, but I just thought that. All right, so y'all just saw what 50 Cent had to say about the situation. Now, what's very interesting is that social media has been going in literally for a week now on Diddy, the speculations, people thinking that he's guilty, that he had something to do with this, especially being, you know, Keefe D was recently arrested. Hey, Keith, Metro Police, come over here. Hey, Metro Police, come over here, all right? Thanks, buddy. Come on over here. Appreciate your cooperation, okay? I'm stand right here in front of the car. Yep. Pleasure. Nope. Go and I'll put it down. I know. Put, the, put that down for a second. All right. You got another on your right? Hooks. Oh, Why would we bring the media? That should be all doing to me. So what they got you for, man? Uh, oh man. Biggest case in uh, Las Vegas history. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like recent? Uh -huh. September the seventh. Oh, no. Wow. Now, what's very interesting about Keefe D's arrest is that we have been knowing this whole situation for years. Um, you know, for all my old tea sippers who have been here, if you guys remember, I did a video on this whole situation seven years ago. I had to go back and like literally hunt for this video. It's still on YouTube. Um, it's basically called 50 Cent and Tupac Fans Slam Diddy for having Tupac hurt. I had to write hurt because you know the algorithm. Um, I couldn't write killed. Okay, so in that video, I'm talking about, this was back in 2016 when Greg Caden came out with Murder Rap, the doc documentary and basically social media went crazy about it and in murder rap we got a chance to hear keefe d talk and keefe d was basically laying it out way back then about diddy's potential involvement and so a lot of the young fans back then were going in on diddy dragging him and things like that so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this flashback of me talking about it it's very interesting this was seven years ago and i low-key still look the same <laughs> God is good, honey, okay? So y'all go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary.
He also played the recordings of Keefe D admitting to the murders. You know, the whole situation is insane. And of course, it's causing a lot of controversy online. Young Tupac Shakur fans are taking the Diddy's social media page and they are going in on him. They are roasting his ass, going off on him. Even 50 Cent has something to say about the entire situation. I want you guys to go ahead and check out all these comments that people were leaving on Diddy's Instagram page. Um, since everything came out three days ago, Diddy has not addressed the accusations. His peoples will not call back any of the reporters as well. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Rapper Tupac Shakur died September 13, 1996, following a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas, and Biggie Smalls was gunned down in Los Angeles six months later on March 9, 1997. The public and their fans still want to know who killed the rap stars, even though it's been 20 years. Now a retired cop from Los Angeles is convinced he has solved the murders. The LAPD detective Greg Kading's prime suspect is Sean Diddy Combs. In a documentary titled Murder Rap, the ex-cop claims that Combs, once known as P. Diddy, offered Crips member Keffy D, whose real name is Dwayne Keith Davis, $1 million to whack Shakur and his manager, Suge Knight. Then, Knight shelled out $13,000 to his own hitman, Bloods member Poochie, whose real name is Wardo Faust, to kill the late Biggie Smalls in retaliation. Kading supposedly wrangled a confession out of Keffy D. The documentary is set to stream on Netflix this spring. A rep for Diddy has not yet replied to the Daily News request for comment. I told you, I told you you can't trust these niggas. Now Puffy done killed Tupac, man. The whole situation is insane. At the end of the day, this is not new information. Greg Keelan has been out here talking about this for the past three years. It's just now that the documentary is on Reels and it's getting ready to air on Netflix at the end of this month. And also, if you guys remember, if you guys were young enough to remember back in the 90s when everything went down, a lot of folks said back then, a lot of hood folks said that Diddy was behind this. You know what I'm saying? Because Diddy was very scared for his life. All right, so y'all just saw the lovely TTV flashback from way back then when I lived in LA, honey. Good times, good times. So, you know, like I said, it's very interesting now. We fast forward seven years later and basically, you know, all of this has transpired. But um, this whole Keefe D thing, I definitely feel like Keefe D is going to basically put it all out there. If he has to go to jail for the next 20 years, He's taking everybody down with him. It's just so unfortunate, all of this stuff that has happened. But people have been talking and dropping hints for years. I remember Eminem doing a freestyle, basically dropping hints that Diddy was involved in some stuff. There's so many interviews of Keefe D basically calling out Diddy. The problem with Keefe D is he wouldn't stop running his mouth. He thought that basically the profit deal that he had signed with um, Greg Caden in LA was gonna protect him for life. And no, that was just in LA. You moved to Vegas, so now the deal is not on the table. And the fact that he was basically constantly doing these interviews and these podcasts, he's basically poking the bear. You know, so the police were like, we can't have this man literally constantly confessing and hinting that he could one of the biggest rap stars on the planet and we not do anything about it. So Keefe D sealed his own fate. I feel no ways about him, but the fans are going in. People are dragging Diddy. Wait, sing, sing to him. Don't sing the song no Let him hear you. you said to me. I don't know you coming to get his bed, man. You acting so strange. Hell, there's even a Tupac AI that has made a disrespect record towards Keefe D and Diddy and I'm here for it. The Tupac AI killed that shit, bitch, okay? Blue, best believe they are coming for you creeping in the dark. We are panthers. Ain't no fucking weakness in our hearts. Some old out, nigga. It's one my battle in this fight to make him pay for every day that they enjoy life. Take them down. Grab your blocks when they see these palms. Uh, no need for cops. Keefe D's a job. Uh, you shot me, but your punks cannot finish because my spirit is very You can't kill it. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys these clips of what people had to say about this situation. Keefe D's different interviews, um, Gene Deal talking about this situation as well. I'm going to show you guys basically a bunch of snippets on why everybody thinks that Diddy's involved and may soon be arrested. So y'all go ahead and check this out. One of my homies from the 30s, 
I heard he get every quarter he get clothes, all this shit. Then you gave this other dude some fucking uh, a brand new fucking Benzo or uh, Maybach. Another nigga piece of the record company. Yeah, damn, homie. I was on top of the world until I met your motherfucking ass, dude. Shit is wrong, dude. Come on, homie. I need something. To throw a dog a bone or something. Fuck. You sit up there talking about you, uh, daddy love. Show us some love. Mr. Love. I be watching you, dude. Damn. You ain't said shit or keep you the or nothing. You just... You walk around me like I'm some shit on the grass or something. God damn, dog. You can get in contact with me, man, nigga. There's ways around that shit, dude. Fuck. What the fuck? Man, you know what I'm saying? There's ways around that, homie. Throw my kids something. Throw somebody kids something. God. This is, is, uh, is puffy. You've said this yourself with a million dollars, whether there was a million dollars, whether there was a half a million dollars. Tell us a little bit about that. What I believe happened with, with Puffy was that, again, I, I don't think he wanted this conflict to get worse than it already was. And if he could figure out a way to quell that, he would. In fact, uh, we have a statement saying that Puffy had reached out to um, the members of the Nation of Islam to approach Suge Knight and say, hey, let's have a peace treaty, let's squash this thing, but Suge wanted nothing to do with it. So he was trying to get out from under this imposing threat, knowing that Suge held him responsible for the murder of his friend, and whenever he would come to L.A., he knew that Suge Knight was trying to hunt him down. Oh, uh, we have a, re a reported incident, an investigation, where Suge Knight had accosted one of his associates at a Christmas party in Los Angeles, and they beat the living shit out of this guy. He almost lost his eye in an attempt uh, for these guys to um, gain knowledge about where he lived in Los Angeles. Uh, so he undoubtedly becomes aware of the fact that these guys are actively hunting me mm. down. They're kidnapping, assaulting people. Uh, my life's definitely in harm's way. And so I think that out of that desperation and fear, he turned to the streets and said, can you guys kind of handle this for me? Uh-oh. Um, because he knew that if you're going to deal with these gang members, then the best thing to do is get their natural enemies to you know to uh, to do the work for you and is that the million dollars a million dollars was on the a according to key fee d he says there was a kind of a loose conversations at green blatts up on sunset in which puffy uh, allegedly tells key fee d um listen i'm gonna what you made a comment right where you agree with key fee d when he say that you know he saved puffy life and puffy should reach out to him if you don't mind man can you go more into detail about that about Keefe D saving Puffy life? Um, it was times like we was up in the uh, House of Blues. And I think LL probably was performing at that time. It was just me and Puff. Then the dudes from Black Hands came in. And we didn't have that many people with us. But then you know, Keefe D shows up and he got like 15 or 20 guys with him. You know, so they all around us and it make it seem like our team is strong and we all together, but they there with Keefe D. So Puff is bringing him in and giving him tickets, you understand, for his manpower. You understand? And Keefe D, he had to know that Puff was only doing that so he could keep the bloods off our ass because if we got the Crips with us, we do got enough dudes. And Keefe D is not going to, at that time, he was such a boss that he wasn't, his dudes and them wasn't going to let anything that happened to us. You understand what I'm saying? So just out of respect of you knowing what you did, you understand? You knowing how you played the game and played this dude, if he's down and out, you understand? Why you shouldn't throw him nothing? Why you shouldn't do nothing for him? Because when he was up, he made sure that you stayed up. So Keefe D, he was really saving Puffy life. Because you already know. I mean, I had Keefe D on the platform numerous times, right? And, you know, he's a jokester. So I feel like people, they don't really take him serious because he always cracking jokes. But... I mean, you confirmed it, man. You know, Keefe D was really, you know, saving Puffy life.
man, Keefe D, Keefe D was a boss, bro. You understand? I'm going to tell you a story that Keefe ain't going to tell nobody. When Zip got shot, he brought Keefe D and his people to New York to handle it. And that's all I'm going to say. That's how much your boss Keefe D was and Zip thought Keefe D was. Right. So with that being said, you feel like Puffy should reach out to Keefe D. Because you already know, I mean, me having Keefe D on the platform, he's always like, oh, man, you know, Puffy, he gave this guy this. He gave this guy a car. He gave this guy a whole lot of money. He gave this guy a whole lot of clothes. Where's my stuff? But, I mean, you agree with that, then. You know, Puffy, he should reach out to Keefe D. Puff can't do that. Puff can't do that based on what has been said and what has been done in the in in the um in the media. If it do like if he does that, it seemed like he did contribute to the murder of Tupac. Yeah, Yo, you're right. I mean, they wouldn't be smart for you know Puffy to reach out to Keefy D, but I mean, you do agree with Keefy D then that he make a valid point. Yeah, I can see that. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. Now that Dwayne Keith D. Davis has been indicted on one count of red rum with a deadly weapon, was Diddy the one who initiated and orchestrated this hit? Let's get into it. In 2006, Valletta Wallace, the mother of Biggie Smalls, sued the LAPD for $500 million based on the fact that she believed the police covered up the death of her son. This led to the case being reopened and it was given to Detective Greg Kading, who then said that he got new information leading him to believe that P. Diddy was involved and that the cases between Tupac and Biggie Smalls were in fact linked. Please pay attention. After working on the case for three years, Detective Kading says that he came to the conclusion that it was Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, who put out a million-dollar hit on Tupac and Suge Knight. He says the music mogul had close ties to L.A. gangs and hired Crips member Dwayne Keith D. Davis to carry out the hits. So one day you get a call from Zip, and he asks you to meet him at Green Blatt's Deli? Yeah. And what happens there? We go here, and, uh... Shit, uh, what's her name? Angela Winbush. And, uh, what's her name? Mr. Pease. He was all up there. We was up there eating in jelly and shit. Puff was with a couple of girls from the hood and shit. And then he took me downstairs. Just got to talking and shit. Yeah. Keefe D says that uh, Puffy pulled him aside. And basically solicited, um, his assistants to take care of of uh Shug. and of course tupac's name came up and he was kind of added to the list according to keefe d and uh that's when there was a kind of a very vague discussion over money and next thing you know las vegas happened and in case you're wondering why Davis was doing all this self-snitching, well, it's because when he met with the local and federal authorities in 2009, he actually confessed to all of this, but their agreement was that they wouldn't use any of this information against him. So he clearly thought he had immunity. You see, uh, that was only specifically pertaining to the interview. However, it didn't have anything to do with him writing memoirs and going on other shows for interviews and running his mouth. Please pay attention. This morning, new questions about why it took authorities 27 years to arrest 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis for the murder of Tupac Shakur. Overnight, we spoke to the former investigator who worked on both the Tupac Shakur and Notorious B.I.G.'s murder case, who says Davis set himself up. He was under what we call the proffer agreement back in 2009 on his initial confession. And that agreement states that we can't use the information in that interview against him after being questioned in 2009 davis gave multiple interviews and wrote a tell-all memoir detailing specifics about the night of the murder including this one to bet you said the shots came from the back who shot two buttons looking for the cold of the streets it just came from the back seat it was those public comments that reinvigorated the case he erroneously believed that he had immunity which he never did and so that gave him this sense of comfort that 
thinking that he could go out and brag about being involved in the murder without any repercussion. Caden says the slaying was supposed to be carried out by Davis, but they mistakenly pulled up on the wrong side of Pac's car. And so therefore, his nephew, Orlando Babylane Anderson, is the one who did it. Now, Davis has alleged that Faith Evans actually knew about this entire plot to take the life of Tupac. He says that after it was done, he contacted both Evans and Diddy to let them know that they had done the job and that they were responsible for the death. Caden says despite Biggie Smalls' beef with Tupac, he had absolutely nothing to do with it and he didn't even know about the plot, though they think that Faith knew. But at the end of the day, I find it interesting that Orlando Anderson is the one who was the trigger man when it wasn't even supposed to be him. But coincidentally, he was the one that got into a fight with Pac at the Vegas casino. Now, it's alleged that after narrowly escaping with his life, Suge Knight hired blood gang members to take out Biggie. Uh, they say that Biggie was slain on his way home from a party thrown by Vibe magazine. Interestingly enough, the documentary says uh, that Suge Knight actually saw the face of the person who took Tupac's life and that he also went to school with the hired hitman, Dwayne Keep D. Davis. With that all being said, TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. You gave the gun to Big Dre. But he got cold feet, so Orlando, he ended up snatching the gun and shooting Tupac. He, he, oh, no, Big Dre, no. Was Big Dre like that? Was he capable of doing that? Was he a shooter? Them dudes was kids, man. Both of them dudes was kids back then. They was kids, dude. Them dudes was kids. Dre, Dre was an all-CIO basketball player, dude. You know what I'm saying? Big Dre was an all-CIO basketball player. You know what I'm saying? A nice shot, all that shit. Dunking and all that shit. Them dudes was kids. Dre was an athlete. Them dudes was athletes, dude. You know? They weren't about that, you know? Yeah. Back then, Dre was a... Yeah. So he didn't pull the trigger? Man. We already discussed that. We already discussed that. Were you trying to get me in jail again? And when asked about the validity of Keefe D's testimony, he said the white Cadillac that shot at him and ultimately took the life of Tupac, inside of this Cadillac there was only two people, and Orlando was not the shooter. That's the reason why I never had a problem with Orlando or came at him. Who want to see? I wouldn't wish somebody going to prison on my worst enemy. The DA says that Keefe D was in the car with his nephew and that presumably his nephew according to the DA, is the one that shot Tupac and that it was done with the full knowledge of Keefe. Um, do they have it right? It was only two people in the car. And Pac not going to tell the story. I ain't going to tell the story, but I tell you this. And it's, I, I never had nothing bad to say about uh, uh, Orlando because, <laughs> number one, he wasn't a shooter. Number two, he came to my hearing and told to let me go and told the truth. They still didn't let me go. If you are called to testify in this case... I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. Why not? Yeah, I wouldn't be. Why not? Well, number one, okay, because I'm not going to get on the stand and testify on somebody for what? They seem to be saying that Orlando was the shooter and Keefe was in on it, that he had full knowledge of what was going down and it was revenge for Orlando getting beaten up by Tupac and his team uh, at the MGM after the Tyson fight. Is that correct? No. Then who shot Tupac? It wasn't Anderson, so that's all I got to say about that part. To summarize, you are saying Orlando was not the shooter although you won't say who the shooter was, you are not saying whether Keefe was involved in any way in the shooting, um, and you are saying that if you're called to testify by either side, you will not comply, you will not testify. Do I have that right? A thousand percent. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't testify. None of that You know, at the end of the day, free Keefe D. You know, I was thinking, to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy. And Kim 
was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's it? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Mm. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead, face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. And then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was gonna meet up with him because we were in Vegas and then the next thing you know, You want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Mm -hmm. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he, has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning is gone. Oh, is the list. Please, please, God told me to ask y'all for help. I need... All right, Puffy, go fuck yourself. Number one, I just got to finish having this huge powwow with God himself, Kim, Big, Pac, Heavy D, and a couple of other affiliates of Uptown Records. And they collectively said to go fuck yourself and that they're the reason why you're looking the way you're looking right now. They're haunting you. They're slowly pulling your energy, your life force. You have more than enough money to hide and mitigate these things away from the public, but the veil is going to be revealed. Um, this has not been proven, just for our audience, this has not been proven, but people keep mentioning Diddy's name. I saw it trending on Twitter, and Keefe D has gone on record to express that he felt that Diddy uh, was somewhat a part of it in and, and XYZ. You at least hearing that, how does that make you feel, and if we later find out there might be some truth to that. Like, what is your takeaway from it? Just hearing that, um, that rumor floating around. I don't have to do anything. This individual mentioned dude's name, okay? Law enforcement has a job to do. Will they do it? It does feel like, you know, Pac is being vindicated because you know, back in them days when things were going down, everybody thought he was crazy. He may not have expressed it uh, properly, but that don't mean he was wrong. All right, so you guys just saw those clips, and you guys also saw Tupac's brother doing an interview with um, Comedy Hype. And basically, Mo Prem, you know, he wasn't trying to say that Diddy was involved, but you can tell that Mo Prem is definitely giving Diddy the side eye. And I'm sure he knows that there might have been some involvement tied back to Diddy, you know, especially with the South Side Crips and everything else. But it's very interesting that him and Suge Knight, they don't have a whole lot to say about it. They're just going to let law enforcement basically do their job as they should. But Suge Knight said years ago, you know, y'all remember that infamous interview when he was like, I don't get paid to solve homicides. He said, even if I knew who killed Tupac, I wouldn't snitch. So we already knew Suge Knight was not going to cooperate. If y'all want him to cooperate, uh, he's going to need to either be let out of prison. Y'all going to have to give him a good deal. So unless y'all are trying to sweeten the pot and give him a good deal, Suge Knight ain't got shit to say. He about to do his time, child. Now, Keefe D did have a court appearance recently. Recently, um, following his arrest and basically the judge her name is Tierra Jones she said that she wanted to know had he secured legal representation he said that he had but his attorney wasn't available the fact that Mr. Davis is present in custody um, Mr. DiGiacomo and Mr. Palau are here on behalf of the state 
Mr. Davis, sir, have you retained counsel to represent you in this case? Yes, ma'am. Who have you retained? Edie Fall. Okay, and is that person going to be here today? No, he's, uh, he, he needs two weeks to, uh, to be here. He, he, needs to be. he needs a continuance. Two weeks. He said he needed two weeks to be here? Oh, yeah, he needed a continuance for two weeks. Okay, and what's his name again? Edie Fall. Edie Fall? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to continue this matter for two weeks on a Thursday. That date is? October 19th at 9 a.m. Okay, we'll be back on that date. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. So he requested a two week postponement for any further proceedings and the judge agreed to that. Now the relationship between 50 Cent and Diddy has always been a roller coaster. Um, they've been beefing off and on for years because if you guys remember at one point in time, 50 Cent was trying to get signed by Bad Boy and Diddy felt like, you know, he was just, you know, too rough around the edges. Um, you know, he had been shot nine times and Diddy didn't want to really attach himself to 50 Cent. I wrote for Puff. Uh, uh not guilty in a filthy come on gotcha. now, oh uh take this money, money. take this, this money. money oh the um g dep joint yeah, yeah. yeah you wrote that yeah oh, I you got a big plaque for that you, yeah 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 i saw you yale said that you were supposed to sign the bad boy look they knew i was talented they just looked at it and was like ah, i don't want all of the stuff that comes with them mm -hmm. But you know, look, at that point, I would have probably did the deal. So you could, there was no other, like, at that point, mm -hmm. look, when I was, when I was, Jennifer is who told Puff to work with me. Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. Okay. Because she, her first album on the set, <clears throat> Corey Rooney was the executive producer. Mm -hmm. Corey Rooney was my executive producer for Power of the Doubt. Mm -hmm. So we had the relationship from Queens and everything coming out that, that put us in the same circles. Mm -hmm. And then Jennifer was telling me, yo, he is... Dope. You work with him. Like he's gonna, it's gonna, eventually it's gonna happen. And then all of a sudden, 50 Cent ended up blowing up, you know, and starting G Unit and everything else. And ever since then, since way back in like the early 2000s, 50 Cent has been keeping his foot on Diddy's neck. He's been clowning his sexuality, talking about them parties and everything else. So this is something that 50 Cent does. He constantly trolls him. He's also trolled him about Ciroc and all that other stuff. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what ends up coming from this. And I know Diddy has to be feeling away because 50 Cent has a huge fan base. Anything 50 Cent posts is people are watching. You know, it's one thing if it's like a little blog saying, oh, I think Diddy did it. But it's very different when it's coming from 50 Cent. And I also feel like Diddy giving back his publishing out of nowhere also, you know, shows that maybe he knows something's coming down the pipeline. Because remember, Aubrey O'Day even said that part of the way that they could get their publishing back was to sign an NDA that they would never say anything bad about Diddy ever. She didn't sign it, but several of the other members of Danny D. Kane did. So I'm really thinking, is that why all of a sudden now he's willing to give people back their publishing, like Mark Curry, Mason, so many others. So it's gonna be very interesting to see like what ends up happening from here. So a lot of people are waiting for Diddy to address this, but if you know anything about Diddy, he does not address this. A few years ago on The Breakfast Club, Charlemagne the God asked him about the whole murder rap situation. And Diddy was basically like, we don't address rumors, point blank, period. This documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect. But I appreciate you as a journalist asking. <laughs> Thank you. Because you, listen, seven years ago, I'd have been like, yo, did you hire somebody to kill Pac? But no, you do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not Which we never believed, by the way. Yeah, thank you. So I don't think we're going to hear Diddy speak on this anytime soon, especially on social media. I think he's going to continue to ignore it and hope and pray that this ends up blowing over and that Keithy D keeps his mouth shut. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to hear y'all's thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think about all this? Do you guys feel like Diddy played a hand in this and that he solicited Tupac's murder? Or do you feel like Keefe D is just being messy? Do you feel like Keefe D was really the shooter and it wasn't Orlando Anderson? You know, it's, it's crazy to me how 27 years later, I think it's been about 27 years since Pac was killed, that we're still talking about him to this day. Like, he was not lying when he said his legacy would live on for generations. You know, the fact that, you know, my kids know Tupac and his music and, you know, just all this controversy. Kids who weren't even born back then are still affected by Tupac to this day is a testament to, you know, just the work he put out there, his music, his legacy and everything else. 
So again, like I said, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Please make sure to like the video. Feel free to share the video as well. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.